Wake up everyone, it's Matt along with Goo and Angel. And today we're gonna to talk about our dark dream. Probably the still the best unit arguably in all the game in Japan, Nocturnus, who should be coming very, very soon. And we're gonna talk about why he is the best unit in the game and why so many people are looking forward to him. So please stay tuned. Alright, so let's start off with Nocturnus. Uh, his leadership effect is just insanely powerful, uh, especially for if you're building a big boss party. Uh, increases uh, the boss uh, party physical power by 25%, which is an insane buff, especially for Nocturnus. Uh, if Nocturnus is in your party, there is almost no reason not to have him as your leader. Uh, it just absolutely amplifies any of his skills and any other uh, boss unit skills as well. All right, so let's just start. His first uh, skill, Jet Sword, is a his weakest attack, which still inflicts 195% sand physical damage, which with a range of three. So all, all in all, this this dude is just an absolute beast of a unit that has a very very good first skill uh having a range of three is great it's a zam skill so it allows him ready to have two different elements which is very very huge and on top of that uh just just a nice uh you know initial skill to get there uh his grand cross skill is next has a range of two it is a Plus, uh, has MP consumption of 60, inflicts 250% whoosh damage to all enemies. Uh, just a very good overall damage um, and uh, is very, very powerful. The last one is actually an incredibly powerful skill called Genie Skill. Uh, we'll see what the uh, true translation is. Randomly deals 75% physical damage to enemies five times and rarely lowers defense. Uh, if Nocturnus gets a lower defense on you, most likely your unit will be dead the next time it hits him. And with the skill, it could actually hit him on the same turn. Uh, so 75% times 5, 50, 300, 375. But once you get through with all that, and if you really heart him all the way through, you're going to look at, uh, with the 10 skill, that one has almost 550, 575% total damage. Uh, so just from that, you can see how in absolutely insane he is. And on top of that, his stats for physical attack power is absolutely incredible, the best in the game. Plus, on top of it, with his leadership effect at 25%. And you can see how we're snowboard, snowballing all the way through. Now, let's go ahead and go through his awakening skills. His first awakening skill. Odd number turns, it increases attack, defense, agility, and skill. And so what does skill mean? It also means the, like, the damage it affects as well. So attack and and the skill are increased, which just gives him that much more power. And that skill goes for all of his skills, including the one if you're going to give him one on top of that. So he is hard to kill. He has uh, increased agility, uh, which is probably his biggest weakness. And it's still uh, well in the uh, uh, 
average to above average portion of the entire set. Um, he has defense increase. And on top of that, he, his uh, basic characteristic or his normal thing is the genie fighting spirit, which reduces damage taken by 20% for three turns from the start of battle. So for the first three turns in battle, he reduces damage taken by 20%. His first turn, he increases his defense. Uh, so spells do more damage, but still 20%. And if you're thinking arena, that's on top of the 30% as well. So you are seeing a very large damage reduction. It's not quite 50% from arena, but you can still go through that. And you just see an absolute... Uh, monster of a unit and on turn three it actually gets two of those of the attack defense agility and skill bonuses and works for each odd unit so our odd turn so up until turn 11 from three to 11 he becomes supercharged from turn one to third uh to i'm oh, not nope, sorry from one to yeah one from one to 11 he becomes supercharged, and it's just absolutely there. Uh, 1 through 12, he is still incredibly powerful. Second is uh, Bang Resistance 25. Fourth is Crackle Resistance there. The third one, he gets automatic HP recovery and 5% physical power. So that just adds 5% more power all the way through. And uh, finally, for uh, 50... He gets physical conscience or concentration, I should say, 5% and power 5%. So he gets more power and his skills become a little bit more powerful. So all in all, he just becomes an absolute beast of a unit that has all this power where we kind of just want to just go, wow, wow. And we just haven't seen a unit that has gone through that. So let's go see what his stats look like. His stats at level 120 are absolutely insane. The highest HP, the highest attack in the game. Um, he starts at three movements. So if, even if you just get one of him, he always has three movement. There is no plus one to him, or at least no plus one yet. He doesn't have awakening. And in all fairness, there are no units right now, even that are awakened, that come next to him. So don't expect that in any of the near future. Uh, his MP is probably his other weakness. Uh, at 360, if you're looking at these skills here, 80, uh, you could probably get it down to about 70. That limits his use of uh, the uh, genie skill there. But all in all, he could still use four to seven, depending on which skills you go through there, which is just an absolute power uh, throughout. His agility is still good at 387. And remember, he gains a lot of agility until after, you know, the end of turn 11. Very, very nice overall. Uh, wisdom is very low, but in all honesty, no one really cares. Uh, his weight 65, and in all fairness, if his weight was 75, he would still be uh, one of the kings of arena anyways. So this man is the king of arena and PvE, so good luck to everyone there. His weapon is the weapon of choice. Uh, attack 14, HP 45, physical power plus 4%. Uh, you get it from the Free the Phantom Realm, and when we get the one year anniversary, there will be... Uh, ability to get more of these as well so there are if you don't get very good rolls uh, right now don't worry there's going to be another chance relatively soon that we will be getting more of those rolls you can get grand cross genie skill hp attack and i think even mp and mp might not be the worst thing for the weapon either just to try to help with the overall stats here uh, for the mp but once again this guy is an absolute monster uh, his preferred learn skills, honestly, don't know if you need to use uh, to learn any skills with Nocturnus. Uh, the Raging Roar is actually uh, martial damage. Yes, I know it's martial damage, but it surrounds him. 
it, it's an AOE skill that he can use that will help lower attack. Um, he already has a skill that lowers defense, so he doesn't need to do that. So this is a, a way to kind of just get that lowered attack um, and go through it. Yeah, it lose, he loses some of his physical power through that. It's not the greatest, but this is kind of where I go. If you go for something else just because he's got his physical power and you want lower MP consumption, that's fine. I'm really kind of going at the very back end here. The other stuff I've got is actually his... The only thing he doesn't really do is heal himself. So you don't want him to heal himself if you don't need to. But on the first turn, uh, Remed Heal might actually be a very interesting and very annoying thing for him. Uh, where he can actually regenerate himself for three turns if he can't reach or... Um, the only enemy he can reach is uh, strong against Sam, because that's usually the one skill that he'll be able to get to. Uh, but all in all, you're really not going to be using that much of preferred learned skills. I almost tend to say, you know what, he doesn't really have any. But here's some that I said theoretically might be able to use. But yeah, that that's still very much stretch overall. For the pros, cons, and pull, there's so many pros that... Honestly, people can complain, what about this, what about this, and you're right, and I'm sorry, I just ran out of room. Uh, he has the highest HP and attack in the game with a stupidly powerful leadership, and it just amplifies his own power uh, to the max. With the Awakening, he can increase the stats for three turns for each odd turn until turn 10. Third HP gets HP that HP recovery, but... On top of it, if you give him the Remedy Heal, he gets even more. Um, and once again, you know, for people who get him all the way to five, he he, there's just nothing that stops him. Uh, you, you know, obviously uh, some end bosses head-to-head -head will obviously destroy him just because of level differences. But otherwise, that physical power is just way too strong. Um, that Fifth Awakening is an insane power boost. And on top of it, he reduces damages by 20% for the first three turns with the Genie's Fighting Spirit. So you can send him out there and he will absorb a lot of attacks with his HP, his defense, his buffs. He is just so incredibly hard to kill. Um, about a month ago in Japan, they released a unit to counter Nocturnus and that Actually, that unit is still in the top five, the counter to Nocturnus, but Nocturnus can actually still defeat it uh, just with a little bit of health. And they literally built it as a counter to Noctis. This is how strong they built him. Very, 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 very insane. Um, yeah. The big cons here is he's an incredibly expensive unit. What do I mean? Some of his insane power requires three and five hearts. Otherwise, he costs 65 in arena. Um, yeah, uh, I don't have much. Why well, pull? Yes, uh, this is my drunken sailor moment. This is going to be my Soma moment. Uh, and this is why I haven't blown a lot of resources in the other two units that were before him. Uh, and they might not even release Nocturnus until the very end. And even so, I'm still going to wait. I'm going to try to get Nocturnus. I actually want to get him to five hearts. This is going to be a unit that is going to be used for a very, very long time. And uh, the other two units that I pulled very hard for were Sorrow, Soma, and... Actually, a Stark I didn't even pull that hard for. He came very, very quickly for me, so I got lucky there. Um, absolutely, absolutely insane units. Uh, can't really say too much more. So let's go with the summon unit as well, the War Griffin. Uh, actually, kind of a very interesting unit. Uh, you're going to want to add another Breath skill. Uh, it kind of doesn't matter for the suggested unit. Uh, his leadership effect is increases the power of nature whoosh power. So nature's whoosh uh, by 10%. It's very, very, very specific really to War Griffin. 
Uh, this is a nature unit. Uh, it has a lot of whoosh breath skills and can reduce the speed of all enemies. Slow is actually the very interesting spell that War Griffin has and might actually be really, really useful in some really tough battles, uh, especially if you can boost up its speed uh, uh, enough uh, to kind of counteract some of the super fast, or if you have uh, just a slightly too slow of a unit, uh, War Griffin can actually be useful in helping you pick up that speed or stop that speed and allow your other units to kind of counter through there. So this one is actually a unit I kind of wanted at least one of anyways, and in all honesty, uh, I'm probably going to have one. So I'm very happy that War Griffin's along with uh, along in Nocturnus. Uh, I think he's a lot better than Harmer at the very least. So I'm very excited about that. Um, the other skills, the bra breaths, are just okay. Uh, if you look at his stats, has four movement. Its HP is okay its defense is fairly low it's exactly what you expect a breathing unit that can move uh pretty fast has good agility but is uh one sh maybe one shotable i mean nocturnus can uh one shot a lot of things now and with nocturnus just be very very careful uh he will be able to destroy a lot of units that uh you're used to being able to take two hits will no longer be able to take two hits so just be very very careful with that so all in all, this is the banner I have been waiting for for the longest time. Basically, since the Stark, I haven't really been super excited about too many other banners other than maybe Marquise de Lyon. And even so, I didn't go that hard because Marquise was pushed out a little bit and I know that Nocturnus was pretty close. So I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, I hope you guys are excited as I am. I know a lot of you guys have been saving Nocturnus is incredibly worth it. Um, this is what I'm going to call a quote, quote, value banner. Uh, the reason I say that is he is still top tier in the game. Great for PVE and arena. Uh, and these are the units and gotchas that you really should be spending your resources on, even if you're free to play. So good luck, everyone. I hope that your polls are very fruitful and I hope to see you guys later. Bye, everyone.